every single day, several times a day, Iran threatens to destroy Israel and kill everybody there. They haven't yet, you might have noticed. I mean, there are rockets flying in from Gaza on a smaller basis and heavier rockets from Hezbollah, both of which are supplied by Iran. But the big attack hasn't come yet. Want to know who's claiming credit? So far, the Biden administration. We'll see if the peace holds. Claire Lopez, as we were just talking before we came on air, the news changes pretty much two, three times a day whether or not Iran is going to hit Israel. They've told the entire world they will. They've told the UN. They today shut down the airspace over Iran, which seems to indicate don't fly here. We're going to be firing missiles. And Israel is prepared to take blows and to deliver blows. According to the White House just today, spokesperson said, Joe Biden has staved off a wider war and that his diplomacy, which I find somewhat comical, his diplomacy has caused Iran to back down. However, Hezbollah is a different story. In particular, you made a very good point earlier today, talking to me, that there's a certain amount of pride at stake for the Persians. Tell our audience what you mean by that. Yeah, so there has been obviously a delay since the time that the Iranian regime threatened retaliation against Israel, which, by the way, has not claimed responsibility for the assassination of Hamas political uh, leader uh, Ishmael Haniya. But it's uh, expected. I mean, it's understood that it very likely was the Israelis. And so the threat went out to them from the Tehran regime some days ago, but the pause has extended. And yes, there has been furious diplomacy on the part of the United States, also the Russians. And I gather that the OIC, Organization of Islamic Cooperation, has been meeting as well. But to your point, Barry, about this being a point of pride. So Ismail Haniya was a guest in a guest house staying in a place in northern Tehran. And that's where the reportedly bomb uh, had been placed inside of the room where he was staying many weeks ago, is the report. And uh, that was the end of him and one bodyguard who was there with him, apparently. But so there's a point of honor that as a guest within the tent, let's say, of of the host, uh, the Iranians, by the way, I, I, they don't want to, real Persians don't want to be called Iranians. Um, but that the fact that he was um, taken out while a guest of the regime is indeed a point of, of honor for them to have to uh, avenge his death. But at the same time, the overwhelming force gathered together by the United States, uh, obviously by Israel, other allies or partners that participated, for example, back in April of this year, 2024, countering the Iranian attacks back then, may be giving the regime pause. So kind of what I said is they're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place, and it's not at all certain what they're going to do at this point. You know, I, I just, this thought just popped into my head. I don't know if you remember when you were a little girl, when, when I was a little boy and we'd be at recess or at lunchtime, there would be these choose up games. And, you know, there'd be one captain on one side and one captain on the other. And, and the first guy would say, I pick David. And then the gal on the other side, you know, I pick Stephen. And then I pick Barry and I pick Claire. And, and you'd pick teams and then you'd make the rules and then you'd start the game. Well, that's kind of what's going on. You know, this this war has been declared since Ishmael Haniya was blown up by somebody. And in the beginning, it was a missile from a submarine. Then it was a missile from a plane. Then it was a drone strike. Then it was a RPG from across the street. And now the story has settled down to a bomb placed under his bed at some point previous to his arrival. 
And during this entire period, Claire, which is so strange to me, Iran every day says they're going to kill all the Israelis and they're going to hit soft targets and military targets and they're going to bomb Tel Aviv. And one time they put out a video that they were going to blow up the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which I found rather audacious. And there's still no war. The more they claim they're going to have a war, the bigger the, the, bigger the hole is that they're jumping into. And as you said, the ability to back down becomes tougher and tougher from a pride standpoint as the country does nothing. I mean, at some point, do they have to do something and say, see, we punished you. It, it, it seems that they must. Uh, and, and indeed, a lot of this is blustered bravado on the part of the Islamic Republic. But the longer the delay goes on and the longer that the Israel-US partners alliance has to, to gather their forces. For example, the United States has moved the USS Abraham Lincoln aircraft carrier strike group into the Persian Gulf, along with a surge in American forces to the region and many other uh, naval assets as well. It becomes more and more difficult to see what Tehran can do or will do. And we're just really on edge. And that's part of the game, by the way, the psychological operation of keeping Israel and, and all of its people on edge psychologically. But uh, it, it seems they must do something. But what is not at all clear, nor when? Well said. And we're watching our phones and our computers all day long to see what's going to happen next. <laughs>